We are going to draw the region bounded by these two functions, and then we're going to rotate it around the line x equals 2. We're going to find that volume. Let's see how it goes. The first thing that I want to do is remind you that y equals x to the fourth would look like a pretty skinny parabola opening upwards. If we switch the x and y values in that equation, what that does is it just switches all the x and y value in the equation we just graphed. In other words, it gives us an inverse. Ultimately, what happens is it turns that skinny looking parabola on its side. So this is what x equals y to the fourth looks like. The line x equals 1 is just going to look like this. So the region in question is that region right there. And we're going to rotate this region around the line x equals 2. And we're just going to use the washer method to do this. That means that we're going to slice this region up like this. We're going to rotate that slice around the axis of rotation. And you'll notice that we do in fact get a washer. The width of each one of these little washers is going to be dy. So we'll be integrating with respect to y. Now I'm going to erase this graph up here to make a little bit of room and I'm going to erase this washer because we need to talk about how to find the inner and outer radius of each one of these washers. The outer radius of this washer looks to me like we can calculate by taking this length here which is 2 and subtracting this little length right here which is given by the function x equals y to the fourth. Since we are integrating with respect to y we can just call that y to the fourth. Now fortunately the inner radius doesn't appear to change. No matter where I draw Draw the inner radius, it looks like it's just going to be a length of 1. In other words, 2 minus 1. So we can plug those two radii into our volume integral. We do need some limits of integration. You'll notice in this region, the smallest value of y is given by negative 1, and the largest value of y is given by positive 1. So let's simplify this thing and integrate. Foiling this first term out and squaring 1 gives us this integral, which we can simplify just by combining a couple of like terms. And now we can integrate, and we can plug in the limits of integration. Integration. You'll notice that simplifying gives us the same expression twice. And if we combine all these terms using a common denominator, we end up getting 208 45ths pi. That is the final answer in units cubed. Let me zoom out here so that you can see the setup. And we can call this one finished.